Good morning, everyone. I'm here. I'm here. I'm sorry. I'm late. I think I can describe myself right now as a distracted little bunny. I am bouncing all over the place from um, preparing for the new house stuff to decluttering to packing to running my business. And I'm just bouncing from everywhere to everywhere. And my brain is not functioning well on that bouncing around. I'm sure some of you can relate this this world that we live in nowadays has so many distractions just when you're just running a normal day but then you throw in a few more things going on in your life and it just becomes crazy. But I did manage to make a cute project today this week I designed this project. Um, it is a tea bag holder. Look so cute. It holds four tea bags. I'm gonna open it up in a moment. This one's a hard one to open up um, when I'm holding it just because of the way the tea bags are placed and you can, we'll be able to see that in a moment. But just suffice it to say, there's this little belly band that holds this folded booklet in place and it's just really cute and really not that hard to make. The good thing is, look at this beautiful paper. This paper is on sale for the month of June. So don't forget to pick some of this up. It's um, blue monochromatic uh, paper. It's just gorgeous, gorgeous paper. Um, so um, there are other papers on sale this month too. They are all our non-specialty designer series papers. Um, so um, check those out when you're in the store. Look for the designer series paper sale and make sure you pick up the paper now because Stampin' Up! doesn't put paper on sale very often. So it's a good time to pick up your favorites right now. And the other thing we have going on this month is our starter kit special. And so if you are placing a large order and uh, you're not already a demonstrator um, and uh, I would highly highly recommend getting the starter kit this month it is $99 and you get to choose $155 worth of product to go in your starter kit um, that is more than usual normally you get a um, $125 in your starter kit so that's 30 extra dollars worth of product and it's just a great deal. It has free shipping on it. Um, you can put those designer series papers on there too, the sale price ones. So you can really max out. Um, and when you do that, you'll be joining my team and um, we have fun team events like this um, tonight. It's Friday. <laughs> Hello, uh, it's Friday. Tonight is our team stamping night. So um, we have other things that are going on behind the scenes that you don't see um, just from the customer side. So um, it's great. Um, one thing I'll say, and I get this question over and over again, it's like, I don't, I don't want to get the starter kit because I'm going to have to do classes or I'm going to have to sell. Um, you do not have to sell. You can be your very um, own best customer and just buy from yourself and you get a discount for doing that. So it's a really good deal. It's why I signed up originally, what, 17 years ago, I signed up to get the discount and that lasted only a few days with me, but it doesn't, you can last, it can last for however long you want. You can, um, you don't have to sell and you don't have to do classes. Um, I just, you know, I, I just couldn't help myself. So uh, here I am, right? Um, but you don't have to, uh, the vast majority of demonstrators are hobbyists and they just buy from themselves. So um, don't feel like you can't join just because you think you are a customer and that's where you land. Um, I, there's, um, I've had long time customers, like for years and years, I've told them about the starter kit and um, they've said, no, I wanna be a customer. And then at some point, um, some of them have decided to um, become a demonstrator and get that discount. And so that's what the starter kit is. Uh, if you'd like more information about that, just look below in the description of the video. There's um, uh, a link to um, information about the starter kit or contact me, email me, leave me a question down below. I'd love to answer your questions. Um, I had a team member, a new team member um, who uh, texted me yesterday 
and she was like all concerned uh like oh i'm sorry to bother you i have a question i'm like ask questions i like questions i'm an inquisitive person so please feel free to um ask questions and um, i'm not gonna hold your feet to the fire and make you get the starter kit just because you ask me a question just ask your question and i'll be happy to answer it regardless of the outcome i'm like pretty good about all of that stuff i you know i want what's best for you because that's what's best for me all right a lot of talking so let's jump in oh and before i forget um if you want a project sheet for this cute cute tea bag holder make sure you're on my email list that's the only way you can get it um, it's a free email list and i send out project sheets on saturdays it just works out really well for me so Tomorrow you'll get a project sheet for this with a picture of the project. I'll probably, I haven't done this yet, um, I haven't made the project sheet yet, um, but I'll probably do like a little scoring diagram for you so that you can see where to score. And um, I'll have the measurements for you all in one neat package so that you can either save it on your computer or print it out and have it ready when you need it. All right, and the other thing I will talk to you all at the end because if I get just any more distracted we'll never finish this project right okay let's pop over oh you know what um I, you know what I need to do I'm I'm gonna um I think my my microphone was a little far I hope that sound is better now let me just um before I get started um just going to just check on my sound sorry um that's what happens when I go away for a while. Um, I forget to do all the things that I normally do. Okay. I think I'm all good for sound now. Okay. Now I need to turn on my other camera. So many things to do before we start that I usually do ahead of time. Okay. I think that camera is going now. All right, let me pop over to my other camera. Okay, let me show you how this cute tea bag holder works. So you just slide off the little belly band. It opens like a book and then it's top to bottom. So there are these little pockets that hold the little tea bags in. And I have been using, I think it's called um, Twinnings um, tea bag, Twinnings, Twinnings, Twinnings. Um, whatever the brand name is called or pronounced per correctly, um, basically you just fold this way and fold this way and then you have your little thing and then you just slide this in like this and it's really nice. I recommend using designer series paper for this because designer series paper is a little lighter than cardstock and it's gonna fold together a little bit more nicely because it's got a little bit of give to it. Um, uh, cardstock, it probably will work, but it's going to be a little bit um, stiffer. I like the feel of the designer series paper and why not? Because we've got a great sale going on this month. Pick up some designer series paper. And so that's why I'm using designer series paper for that. Uh, for the belly band, you can either use designer series paper or cardstock. Okay, let me set that aside. Uh, let's talk about the designer series paper. It is right here. It is called Countryside Inn. Uh, it's a 12 by 12 paper. It's got beautiful, let me pull this up a little bit more, beautiful patterns just all different patterns um, of blue monochromatic. I'm gonna pull out one pattern right now. We're gonna be using this one. I'll show you how to cut it down. We are also gonna be using the Sweet Citrus Bundle and aha, my stamp set has wandered across the room. Let me grab the case. So you can buy the stamp set on its own or you can buy the die um, embossing folder um, bundle on its own but when you buy all of this together you can save 
10%. So I would recommend getting them all together. Um, the cool thing, this is a hybrid embossing folder, which allows you to cut and emboss at the same time. I'm going to be showing you how to do that. So, you know, um, the sweet citrus bundle, you can make lemons, oranges, limes, grapefruit, um, blood oranges, you know, all different kinds of citrus. Um, so it's really fun to play with the different colors and, and see which different citrus, um, you can come up with. With. I'm using a very simple one today, just one color, um, and we're making lemons. Okay, let me put that aside. All right, I think we're ready to get started. Let's grab, I'm going to grab my trimmer here. Usually I have things cut down, but sometimes it's nice to show the trimmer on camera too, because I don't always get a chance to show that. So I've got a paper here. This, this the paper that you use it's probably better to use a paper that doesn't have a really definite up down pattern this one kind of does but it's a very it's it's not a really well defined up down pattern I know it's a tree but it's it's not like it's not like going to be like glaring so it's better to have like kind of a more geometric pattern um, because of the way it's folded at some point something's going to be upside down so don't really worry about that so much i do do the long length so i start off i'm going to do six and a half inches so just bear with me part of my trimmers off camera i apologize for that so i'm going to line this piece up with six and a half we'll give it a little cut here six and a half and then we're going to cut it down to nine and a quarter all right so there is my six and a half by nine and a quarter inch piece and we're going to switch to the scoring board because it's just easier to score on here we will place first of all let me get we're going to score on the long side first so put that up at the top of your scoring board and we're going to score at the one and a quarter inch mark the four and a half inch mark the four and three quarter inch mark and the eight inch mark turn it to one of the short sides and then score at the three three inch mark and the three and a half inch mark all right that is all there is to the first part so it really helps to have a bone folder we're going to put the long side facing us and i think this is going to be our outside so first of all we're going to find where is that there it is the that first score line and we're going to smooth it down with the bone folder do the same with the other side all right and then we're going to there's two middle score lines so you need to find both of them and fold over once and there's another one it's very hard to see with this paper so just just get it started so it's so you're actually folding on a score line not just randomly go okay so you can see this this is where the little tea bags are going to tuck into and you can see there's like a bit of a, a spine right there okay and then uh, what I'm going to do I'm going to fold this now while it's in the open position there's two score lines here too so I'm just going to fold over like this and fold over like this all right so I think yeah either way both okay this way it's this way this way this way I'm just trying to see if there's a way where this has the tree design um, facing up so when I fold it like this this last fold is going to come like this so this one's going to be facing up okay so we'll do it that way and first thing we need to do 
is we need to secure these little um, flaps right here. You can do that one of two ways. You know me, I love my Tombow glue, but if you use a heavy hand with a Tombow glue, this might not be your best option. You can also use tear and tape. So two different options for you. This is what I like to do. I'll show you that option first. So coming down here, this is the little fold for the tea bag. I'm going to put just a little tiny line of glue. If you're heavy handed, you're going to have to remove some. So just keep it light. I'm putting Tombow right on the edges. See where this is folding? So I'm just putting it, this is a one and a quarter inch width here on the end and this is gonna fold over. So you just want it right on the very edge because you wanna keep those pockets for the tea bags. So this is what I'm gonna do here and just press it down. You can use your bone folder. Okay, that's one option. That's the option I like, but I'm gonna show you the other option. You can use tear and tape as well. This one might be visually a little easier to see. So you can just go along here, find where your end is, put your tear and tape as far over as you can because um, you're gonna make your pocket a lot smaller if you don't. So you need to put it right on the edge. Just tear it off. Okay, so again, it's just like right on where this folds over to create those pockets. So just burnish that and now I'm going to remove the liners. So you can do it either way. I think the Tombow way is faster if you can keep your stream of glue to a minimum. So we've got our little pockets. So let's grab our tea and I'm using the Twinnings lemon and ginger herbal tea. I really loved how this had like really bright yellow. I'm a, I'm a big tea drinker, so um, I drink a lot of herbal teas and I drink green tea. So actually you could do a green tea as well. And even black tea, some people drink lemon in their black tea. So I think this uh, will work well for other um, teas as well. You don't necessarily have to do a lemon tea, but I will say it does look very nice with um, the bright yellow um, in the blue. The blues and yellows always look really nice together. So we're going to do this and this. So right now, um, if you were to lift this up, you know, these tea bags would probably fall out. So you just need to be just a little careful when you're just folding this up like this. Okay. And then when you're folding this together here, the tea bag flaps are on the bottom. Pinch this top bridge right here. Just pinch it flat as you are closing it. You can kind of see and just I just pinch that top part flat and then we're going to close it like that. And there is your cute little, little pouch. All right. So, um, I'm trying to think, I'm going to weight this down for a moment because it's going to pop open with my punch and we're going to, um, create the belly band. So let me grab in my scoring board again. And we're gonna use Knight of Navy cardstock to create the belly band. This length is um, 10 and a quarter inches by two inches. And I'm going to score at the three inch mark, the three and five eighths inch mark, the six and five eighths inch mark, and the seven and a quarter inch mark. You can see what that looks like. Okay, all of these measurements will be in my project sheet, so um, you can write them down right now, or you can wait till the project sheet comes out. So we'll just fold this along the score lines. We'll see which way, okay, that looks good. So these two end flaps will overlap. So I'm going to just put Tombow 
on one of these flaps, come over top and then press down like that. And it creates that little slider. And now I can take this and just slide this over top like that. It's a, a snug fit, but it should, it should come over the top fairly easily. Okay, and this Knight of Navy color looks nice with, with everything. So, um, you know what? I think, again, I don't know how this got upside down. If we fold it like this, there we go. Now the trees aren't upside down on the front anyway. But at some point, at some way, some of the trees will be upside down. So I just refolded that in the opposite direction. Now it looks better. There we go. All right. So now we're going to do the lemons. And to do the lemons, just grab yourself a sheet of a... Um, four and a quarter by five and a half. This is basic white, regular cardstock, not the thick, because the stamp's a lot better. Um, you're gonna grab, you wanna grab your embossing folder and your, your die set right here. Oops, it's gonna go like, whoop, like this, okay. So I'm just kind of arranging this right now. Um, the reason I want to do this is because I want to stamp this so it goes into my embossing folder nicely. So I'm going to do, I'm going to arrange it like it's shown on um, the embossing folder because yesterday I stamped this like willy nilly and I ended up with a piece going in like this and I had to cut some of my um, cardstock off the edges. So the recommended block um, for for this, it says, is that huge block, like it's it's our biggest block. It's this one, but um, they say it's it's an F block. But I think if you put this on here, this is a, a smaller block. This is an E block. I find you can get this almost perfectly onto an e-block and this is much easier to handle so I would definitely recommend an e-block over a big f block all right you want to stamp your outline first I find that easier so we'll just go ahead this is daffodil delight I just inked up my daffodil delight because it was a little little weak so this one might be really inky so just look at how this is arranged and just make sure that you're kind of stamping it in that same direction. And you'll be much happier later on when you go to emboss and cut. All right, so that's the first stamp. And then we're gonna come in with our second stamp and we're just gonna do Daffodil Delight again because I find like a lemon pretty much has the same color on the inside as it does on the outside. And then we're just gonna arrange this. The easiest way to do it is do that circle one up at the top and then kind of just come around and just look at all of the edges and then just come straight down. I am standing up when I do this. Visually it's so much easier to do the standing than it is to do it sitting. Look at how beautiful that is and it looks just fabulous when you do like grapefruit or oranges or limes. It's just beautiful. Okay let's put my ink pad away before I get inky fingers. We'll set some things aside. We are going to bring in our stamp and cut and emboss machine. Open this up. We're going to get things set up first. We are going to do, I'm trying to remember how I did this yesterday. Okay, we need our base platform, which is the number one. Don't put on the thin die adapter, not the number two plate. And then we're gonna use the number four plate, which is for thick embossing folders. So just you just need a one and a four. These plates come with your machine. Okay. So let's arrange this now. Now that we've got this arranged, let's arrange this, because this is just gonna take a little second. You're gonna get faster at it as time goes on. So what I like to do, open up the embossing folder, wherever the logo is, 
that's what I'm saying is the top of my embossing folder. I'm gonna slide this in and I, um, I'm just arranging it. You can kind of feel the embossing folder kind of has these little ridges. So I see I'm putting it um, facing down with a little a cutting line facing down up on the, the top part. Okay, so once I kind of feel like that's in place, then I'm gonna grab my paper and you'll get better at this as time goes on because you kind of have to um, learn how to kind of hold both in place. So you're just gonna kind of cleverly just kind of shift it just until they all look like they are pretty much lined up. And I think that's pretty good, pretty good. So um, even with that, I still have a little bit of um, cardstock peeking out, but I don't think that will be a problem because it's not going crazy out. But you can just see how I saved myself cutting extra just by kind of trying to align it a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to put this down. I'm just all the time putting pressure on that so that my cardstock doesn't shift. And I'll put my number four plate on. And it's a pretty easy roll through the stamp and cut and emboss machine and now let's see if this worked let's remove our die and then let's remove doesn't this look pretty just the the white as well it's just really pretty but now we've got these beautiful citrus embossed pieces that really have a lot of dimension to them it's just really pretty and once you get going on this you can you know stamp a bunch of these and do these really quickly you will get better at running them through each time you do it because i'm already better than i was last night when i was making these and um it just takes just a little bit moment to get it aligned and then you'll just love just look at that you can see the texture on there it looks like a real lemon slice Okay, so I've got some little lemon pieces. I also want to stamp a greeting. So we'll take the Happy Labels Pick a Punch and we'll just slide, 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 slide this in. Okay, this is, oh, I should tell you the dimensions. It's uh, three and a quarter by one inch. Three and a quarter by one inch. Now it's gonna be a little bit shorter I took about an eighth of an inch off, but it's um, three and a quarter by one inch. We'll grab Misty Moonlight ink pad. Let's open it up. This is a greeting that comes with a stamp set, sending you a big squeeze. So cute. I'm stamping it close to my punched end. So about like that. All right, so I'm going to add this down here, down at the bottom. I wanna um, glue this, ha, I I'm glad I remembered this. Um, I'm just gonna put glue down near the bottom of this because I'm actually gonna tuck some of the fruit slices behind here and I don't know exactly how I'm gonna arrange it until I glue it. So. I just put Tombow right along the bottom edge right here. That allows me room to tuck in fruit pieces and arrange them. So, and then I'm gonna glue it right about an eighth of an inch from the bottom of my belly band. See, that's about an eighth of an inch right there. Okay, so you can arrange the fruit however you want. Um, yesterday, I did this this one um, right here, and I did this one back here, and I did this one here. That looks good. You can arrange it however you want. So I'm just gonna put some Tombow right on this section right here. Add this. And you can glue these in if you want to. So you can, first of all, secure that top one. Um, you can do this like just kind of tuck behind here and put a little glue right there 
So it's, and then tuck your other piece in and just lift and put a little bit of glue behind there. Press down. Okay. So let me grab my Essentials Baker's Twine. Where are you? Okay. So I am going to tie a bow. I usually do these ahead of time. Stampin' Up! does not have a bow maker right now. So I have this little um, bow maker. And if you want to know where I got that, um, I can put that link in the description of my video. I have to go look it up. I know I have it somewhere. Um, so here, I'll just show you how I do it. So this just has little pegs on here. Um, I come from behind and I loop this around once more and then I come across here and then this just saves me time if I'm doing a whole bunch of these and I can do double looped bows which I really love. If you have your own bow maker you can just make it however you want. It can be a single bow. And where are my scissors? Snip. So this, I love this Baker's Twine. It is, um, it's got all these neutral colors. Baker's Twine is just really easy to slide on a project because it doesn't overwhelm your project. I'm just gonna put a little Tombow dot right in the center of that lemon slice and stick it down. You can also use a mini glue dot, but honestly, I think Tombow does a really good job of gluing um, Baker's Twine down, provided you put a little pressure on that little dot right there. Okay, and I do also want to add some iridescent, iridescent pearl basic jewels. We're just going to grab a couple. We'll, we'll do it the same way I did this one. Huh, my little lemons, they slid a bit because I didn't glue these ones down. Uh, yes, that is me. Let's put a couple of, come here you, it's a rebel pearl. And this one I put over here. That just adds like these iridescent pearls. It just adds like just a little bit of shine to your project. Isn't that cute? Ah, I just love these. They turned out so super cute. And I know, I know what you're going to ask me next. <laughs> you use Twinnings tea bags. What other tea bags does it hold? You know what? I did not um, practice with any other tea bags because this is what I had on hand. But I did go to my kitchen right before my video tutorial and I just wanted to see if Bigelow tea bags also fit. So let's just open this one up and just um, give it a check. It's not going to fit all tea bags. I will just warn you right now because the um, it's it's a little bit, you know, it's it's really designed for this size of tea bags. So let's just pull these out. And I've got some random tea bags here. Oh, I do have cozy chamomile. That's a yellow. We've got some green tea. I've got green tea with lemon. That will work. Let's see what else. We've got so many tea bags. Ha! Huh. Orange. If you, you were gonna do it like an orange spice. Oh, and I've got a, a Bigelow lemon ginger as well. So look at that. You can do Bigelow. Let's see if this fits in the same space. Yeah, I think this would work. So let's put all Bigelow tea bags in here. Let's check it out. That will give you some more options for for tea bags. I I think Bigelow and tw um, Twinnings have always kind of been around the same type of um, size. So I'm not surprised that they work. But there's an example of you know both of these will work fine. Twinnings or Bigelow. If you have another type of tea bag, you'll have to measure it and see how bulky it is. I will give you, let me just grab huh, my favorite ruler is not where it should be. 
someone didn't put it back and that someone was me I'm sure so let's see um, measuring across a uh, twinnings tea bag is two and a half plus a sixteenth of an inch so just a little bit wider than two and a half and let's see and about just just under three inches tall so let me just double check yeah a little wider than two and a half and just under three inches let me grab a um bigelow one let's double check the measurements on that one this one is a little bit over two and a half is that what this one was too yeah and this one is closer to three inches in height so um, about two and a half by three size tea bags um, provided they aren't super bulky if they if this bottom tee is like really wide then you might need to adjust your measurements for this width part and um, this these two widths parts because otherwise you're gonna have not enough um, depth to hold the tea bags but twinnings and Bigelow both work really well okay I'm probably going to see that in my questions so I just wanted to um, address that before I go any further so I hope you like that project um, all the supplies I use today are um, going to be um, uh, down below in the description of this video and I need to change my um, host code on here let me I'm gonna do this in the background I'm gonna grab my should have done this in advance but every month when my host code changes it's like it's always a scramble i always forget to do something so let me just grab my text button um copy this and just type in host code and let me make this bigger for you Oh, that's really large that's better let me grab a color let's do that all right all right I don't know if that's big enough I'll fix it for next time this is my host code let me add this June 2023 host code there we go um, that's my host code for the month and um, let me grab a photo of what the um, gift will be here it is right in front of my face um, these are the 2023 2025 in color gems um, so they're all the new in colors I think these are going to be just fabulous for fall um, they've got all of those kind of earth tones but some of them work really well for summer too I've been working with that cheerful daisies bundle and I love wild wheat and there's wild wheat in here so um, I think you're going to love these gems for your uh, upcoming projects so you need to spend $50 using this host code and um, you can um, get the host code um, by um, clicking down below there's um, a link to the host code and you can find out all about um, what you need to do to get my gift of the month all right I have talked a lot and now I'm going to answer your questions let's go back in here and say hello to everyone good morning Sue from Texas and Deborah from foggy Virginia Beach <laughs> I'm sorry you're under a fog advisory good morning Nancy good morning Ver blue uh, from Tennessee it's gonna be in the 90s in Tennessee today yikes it's actually pretty warm here too I have to say um, I don't get out much in the afternoon but in the morning um, I did not wear a jacket today so that's always nice good morning Jen good morning Birgit um, uh, she asks, says, I hope you had a great time in Norway. I did. It was really fun. Um, it was 
I think most of all, it was really relaxing because we've been so busy lately and it, we just, we, there, the internet was really bad. So um, we really had to just, you know, enjoy the scenery and everything. And it was just a nice way to um, not be working all the time. So yes, we enjoyed it a lot. And the Norway is a beautiful country. It's just a really cool country to go visit. Um, it was cold, um, not super cold, but cold enough that I wore a hat and down jacket because if you're outside for several hours, you do get that kind of cold feeling. So we did dress really warmly. Um, good morning, Marty. And it's going to be in, in the 90s in Pittsburgh too. Wow. I haven't looked at the weather today, so maybe um, it's going to be 90s here too. I have no idea. Good morning from um, Stewart says good morning from hot and steamy New Hampshire. I guess since I'm sandwiched between um, Pennsylvania and New Hampshire, I probably am in store for a hot and steamy here day here too. Okay, and um, Stewart said yeah, and then 90s in New Hampshire today, so probably the same thing for the Boston area. Marty says, this looks like such a cute project, Brenda. I'm glad you got to go on the trip, but it's nice to have you back. Well, thank you. It's good to be back too. I think that's one of the things that travel allows you to do, like um, allows you to experience different things, but it's always nice to come home. Good morning, Pat. Sue asks, when I'm moving. So I'm moving. I've booked the movers for June 29th. So, um, yeah, I don't know that I'm going to be going, I'm just looking, when is June 29th? Yeah. So there might be a day where I don't go live, like on June 30th, because I don't think I'll have my, um, studio set back up again. If I have a chance, I'll definitely be doing a video ahead of time. I just like, it's been a little tiny bit crazy here, um, so I'll, I'll try and work in advance, but I'm, um, a lot of things are coming to a head right now. So I've got, um, we're helping our, um, landlords, um, like have new tenants come in. So on the weekend, um, we're having someone coming by for a showing. So we've got that going on. I have to kind of keep the place tidy and clean and while at the same time I'm packing and um, decluttering like the cupboards and closets and stuff because I am not paying to move any stuff that I'm not going to use. So if I haven't used something in the nine years we've been here, it is being either donated, um, it's um, like some things you, you throw away, right? Um, but a lot of things, I belong to this fabulous buy nothing group in, in Newton. And um, I post things on there. And in fact, right now on my front porch, I have things posted for pickup. Um, it's kind of like um, a, a neighborhood group, you may have heard of it. And um, yeah, so I'm letting go of things that I um, have not used or like Marie Kondo says, it doesn't bring you joy. They, these things are, are, are going and, and leaving because, you know, even though we the house we're moving into um, is, I guess, similar size to the one we have right now, um, I just I just don't want to pay to move stuff that I'm not using. It feels so much better to live a leaner life. And I'm by no means super lean, but I I do feel like this is a great opportunity when you're moving to do these big um, purges because you don't typically purge on this level um, when when you're not moving like I've been this whole time I have been using the buy nothing board but it's sporadic here and there I find some stuff to to post and it moves on but there's nothing like the looming deadline of a month a move in a month that will make you make decisions quicker and and uh, more brutally than having a move all right, that's a big discussion, but um, lots of things going on in, in the background. Um, and then we're having the floors refinished. So I had to like um, go um, book someone to do that. I'm um, the kitchen floor looked like it had hardwood, but actually it was um, 
this uh, vinyl tile that was actually not in lovely shape anymore. It was starting to kind of peel up. It was like an older vinyl tile, not the newer kind that they have right now. So now um, I, I went to the tile store this week and I went and um, picked some tile and my husband's on a business trip right now. He's coming back tonight. And so he's going to go with me on the weekend and we're gonna go check out this tile and, and see if he likes my selection. We'll see. We'll see, we, we don't always agree with uh, design choices, so hopefully we can come to some sort of um, um, agreement on, on what we're going to do. But maybe he'll love the tile that I like, so hopefully that will be the case, but it's not always the case. So, all right, that was a long, long-winded answer to your question. Um, but yes, we are moving June 29th, Sue. Thanks for asking. Good morning, Janine. Marty said, um, oh, she was a customer who became a hobby demonstrator. That's true. Yes. I mean, yes, absolutely. Yeah, you've um, and it's so good to have you on my team, Marty, because as a customer, like I tend to know people on a certain level that if you join my team and come to my online events, then I get to know you on a much deeper level. And so I'm really glad Marty joined because um, um, I feel like I know her even though I've never met her in person. So that's really cool. Uh, and she says, I'm a wonderful team leader and she loves being part of the team. Aw, thank you. That's really sweet. Um, good morning, Carol um, from Florida. I, and you said hello from Wikiwachi, Florida. I, is that a name? Wikiwachi? That's that's a really cool name. Um, uh Anyway, I'm keeping, I'm reading through some of the comments. Marty says she loves the way the teabag holder folds. It's kind of a, a, a cute fold. I'm, I'm gonna take down this host code because it's, it's distracting me whenever I look onto the camera. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, uh, and Marty says, everyone, don't forget to like the video. Thank you. Please like my video. I love that. Um, it helps Brenda's channel um, more visibility. Thank you. Yes, I appreciate that, Marty. You're so sweet. Um, good morning, Dee. She says this project is right up her alley and she loves it. Awesome. Great. And it's easy, right? It, that wasn't a hard, hard project at all. Janine said, what a cute project. What's not to love for me? Tea and blue and yellow color scheme. Yes, blue and yellow is always good, right? Of our blues said, very cute project, great any occasion gift. D said, um, I checked the sizes of the Harney and Sons tea bags and the Lipton's tea bags for my stash, and they are all the same size as the Twinings tea bags. Oh, good. So, Harney and Sons and Lipton's also work for those of you who want to choose a different brand of tea. Um, Sue so says, I love this tea bag holder. You are so creative. Thank you. You know, I designed this project. Uh, I was like, oh, shoot. I've got a lot going on today. This was yesterday. And I was on my walk in the morning. And I'm like, okay, I know I'm designing something for these tea bags because I, I bought them a few weeks ago because I saw them. And I'm like, I know I'm going to use the sweet citrus bundle. And I know I'm going to use these tea bags. So I'm like, in my head, walking in the park, designing the project i'm like i wonder if like the cardstock will like if i can fold it from the top and then in from the side i wonder if that will work i was like huh i know the cardstock probably won't it will be too thick but maybe designer series paper will work and then oh how great designer series paper is on sale right now and so i literally designed this on my walk in the morning my husband wasn't with me so my brain was free to just like think and and so I designed it as I was walking not the measurements of course because I didn't have the stuff with me but like I was like designing like that way it folds together and yeah so it came together really really nicely I I love the you know it's a little different right um okay Dee says she found the Harney and Sons was just a smidge larger, but I think it would work okay. Yeah, there might be enough room. Um, so give it a try. 
Um, you can always, you know, take projects like this and adjust the measurements a little bit because there is enough room on that paper to either make it slightly wider or slightly longer. We're not maxing out on the paper size. So there is the ability to just tweak your measurements a little bit to fit a different size tea bag, right? Um, Stuart says he, he loves his projects and I'm thinking of adapting the project for Secret Santa office gifts. Oh, I'm very flattered, Stuart. Thank you so much. Um, Kathleen said, what a marvelous tea bag holder and so easy to make, love it. Uh, hi, Phyllis, you just got on. Well, I'm glad I got to say hello to you and you can watch the replay. And don't forget, the project sheet will be coming out on Saturday and that will help all of you because you'll have a visual and down the road, like I, I know sometimes, you know, I see a project and I'm like, yeah, I don't need that right now, but it's cute and I, I wanna do it later. So, you know, you'll, you either print it off or download it and save it on your computer for a later date so that you can um, do it in a, at a different time. So it's nice to have that project sheet that has everything in one place because it has a link to my video, it has a link to my blog post, it has a supply list, it has the instructions, the measurements, and sometimes it has a diagram. So it's like a nice convenient packet that you can use um, down the road. Okay, well, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. I'm going to be so happy to have my husband back. Um, we got back from Norway on Sunday night. Um, we had Memorial Day together. And then um, Tuesday morning, he was off on his business trip. And like, I, you know, it's it's been kind of a whirlwind. And I, I don't think this month is going to get any better. So you're going to see me like a little scattered bunny, um, a distracted bunny, whatever you want to call me all this month. And I'm hoping by September, I'm hoping by the time I get my craft studio set up, we get settled into the house, that I will be a little calmer and more peaceful and um, a little bit more on the ball with everything. But I still want to bring you projects all summer long. And um, sometimes I'll be a little late and I apologize for that. I don't like to be late. It's not the way I like to run things, but hopefully you'll bear with me um, because we have a holiday catalog coming out in the fall and you know, you'll want to do some of my holiday projects. Okay, everyone, have a great weekend, and I'll see you at my regular times on Tuesdays and Fridays next week. Bye-bye.